Let's see how much rep we got, man. <laughs> let's see it. Let's see the rep. Let's see the rep. Holy sh! Bro, what did we? Holy! Look at this, bro. Hey guys, it's your favorite inactive YouTuber, Lozer here. And yeah, I'm inactive, so you know, I thought I had to put out something for y'all, right? So I'm like, I got a lot of options, right? I can make my first 2K20 mixtape, I can make my SIGs and animation video. So I get on the game, I'm like, I'm gonna play a quick my career game and then I'll make the video, right? So I play that one game and then this is what pops up on my screen. At first I was gonna skip it because I thought it was one of those rookie of the month, player of the month uh, letters or whatever you get from your coaching staff. But then I actually read the letter. The top part's flavor of text, but the main part you need to see is that you've also got a brilliant basketball IQ. And because of that, we want to give you access to our playbook this one letter has made my rep method go from being okay or average to one of the best in the game for a slasher i am now able to change the playbook of my team to put in or take out whatever plays i want and when it comes to slashers there's only one play that you would ever need quick one elevator rip I know there's a lot of new, you know, slashing playmakers and stuff like that. But if you played a slasher archetype in 2K19, you know it. You already know what this play is. You know this method. Everyone knows this method. But like I said, slashing playmakers are now a little bit more popular in 2K20. A lot of people may not know what it is, and I will explain why this one play literally breaks the game to the point where in 2K19 it was patched and heavily nerfed. But now in 2K20, they, it's made so much of a return. It's actually stupid. So let's talk about the play first. You might be looking on the screen and see it's under the three point category. It's like, why would you need a three point play as a slasher? I will explain that. Like I said, the slashers from 2K19 already know it, but I'm gonna just go through it for the people who don't. This play is a three point play because it's designed so that you cut from the wing into the paint and then back out to the opposite wing and then catch and shoot for an open shot, hopefully. So say you start to play on the right wing, you'll drop to the paint and then come back out and end up on the left wing for a catch and shoot. But the most important part of this play is the first part, the driving to the basket. The amount of rep you get from alley-oop dunks is one of the highest second to things like pick and rolls, pick and pops, things like that. You get around, I'd say about 800 XP for one alley-oop dunk. So when it comes to trying to get these dunks, of course, you can always just drive to the paint, uh, double tap Y or triangle, whatever platform you're on, uh, and hope you get a good pass, hope it turns into a dunk rather than a layup. You can always do all these things. But the beauty about quick one elevator rip is that if you do it right, if you do the play right, you're almost guaranteed an oop every single possession. With this play, your entire team is on the three point line and the entire defending team is guarding all of your team on the three point line or at least whatever side you're on. So if you're starting on the right, the entire team, both teams is on the left side. So you have that entire right area of the court to work around and then get ready for your cut to the basket. So in this, you're kind of like in a give and go situation. You start the play, you pass it to someone and then you immediately cut to the basket at whatever angle is most convenient for you and then you call for a oop. That's how quick one elevator rip works. Of course, all my slashers from 2K19 know that. I hit 99 on a pure slasher, so I was basically doing this for hours upon hours upon hours. So I know this method by heart. I know newer people might have a little bit of problem finding the best way to do the method and how to get open. I will say that if you're a, um, if you have one attribute or maybe two, three for shooting, for shooting badges, uh, I do recommend slipper your off ball. It's a way to get around your defender uh, during the give and go, like after you pass the ball and you cut. It's a good way to get open for that oop. So yeah, that's basically the entire play. I'll just show you guys some clips on the screen of me doing the play. I don't know how many clips I had the entire game I played. This was all my first game of doing the quick one elevator rip method from 2K19. Uh, and it did really well to the point where it really shocked me how much rep and XP I got just for the finishing category and just for my overall. I do wanna mention that these clips you're seeing right now are with no Lob City finisher. It's not upgraded, it hasn't been touched. I might upgrade it just so I can continue to do this method. But all of these dunks you're seeing right now have no Lob City finisher equipped. Not only do I not have Lob City finisher, this is on Hall of Fame difficulty. So I'm doing these animations and getting these dunks and jumping past these defenders with one hall of fame with no bronze 
no silver, no lob city finisher, no, no, no rarity of that at all. So you might be saying, Lozer, why is this different from like a give and go situation or just passing the ball and just driving to the paint and double tapping wide slash triangle, whatever. The reason that this is different is because A, like I said, the big men are not in the paint. B, you have the entire right or left side of the court to work around your defender. And also one very beneficial thing when it comes to calling oops, it's your shot percentage. If you do not catch the oop, it does not go in your field goal percentage. If you do not catch the oop, it does not go as you turning over the ball. If the oop gets blocked, you have zero penalties on your character. Doing this method will never drop your teammate grade. And because we're playing with Hall of Fame, there's so much XP you can get just from getting an A+. There's no way to demote your teammate grade unless you're getting reaches on you, you're losing the ball from steals, which if you're calling the play fast enough, this is not going to happen. Another plus to this is that even though you are a Hall of Fame difficulty, because you're technically getting all of these on assist and not ISO or posting up or anything like that, the bots will never double team you. In my career, they have a thing where if you're posting up a lot and you're drop stepping up and under all that, you're scoring a lot. If you're a shooter that's scoring a lot, if you're a slasher that's scoring a lot at a, at a certain point, they will start to double team you. With this method, if you're doing oops the entire game, you will never get double teamed the entire game. I don't understand that part but it is a huge W. So unless you have a defender that has like off ball pass that will stop you from cutting to the basket, unless you have a defender that has a pit pocket and reaches a lot while you're calling the plays and you're not paying attention, this method is game breaking and I hope they don't update it like they did in 19. If they do, I'm sorry, do it while you can. I just know by the time this video goes up, I'll be maxing out my slashing badges. So best of luck to y'all. But yeah, I'll be playing examples of how to play is done, how to do it effectively, like I said, you start at one of the wings, you call the play. It might take a minute to call it depending on how you have your play system set up. So you call it on the wing. Uh, as soon as you have everyone in a position, you press A or and or X depending on the platform. Once again, you press A or X to pass it to the person at top key. And then you immediately either cut to the baseline or cut through the middle and then spam Y or triangle to call for a oop. Nine times out of 10, if you are fast enough, if you have slippery off ball, if there's no people standing in the paint, which there normally isn't, it's just a one-on-one -on -one situation where you can jump for the oop and your defender can't, you know, try to jump that far to try and block it and you get an easy, easy alley-oop finish. So yeah, you get so much XP potential, so much badge potential and things like that. But the main problem when it comes to this method or getting to this method is how I unlock the ability to call plays. I am currently in March near the playoffs and have played 80 plus games of my career. The reason I was able to unlock all of these things was because I played my career a lot. Like I said, I played 80 games. I'm currently in March. I get around 37 minutes a game from the coaches just because they like how I play and you get to the point where you play a lot and then you, the more you play, the more they start giving you stuff like the jump shot creators and the ability to pick your own drill and you know the uh, training facility right so I I'm, I unlocked this immediately right when I played my 80th game and yeah for the most part I haven't simmed any of my games so sadly to unlock the ability to change around your plays and put on quick one elevator rip you need to have played a lot of my career already which kind of defeats the purpose of being able to or just going into my career for badges when you're a park player because in order to get this badge method you have to have played my career a lot which I doubt any of you do. So in that situation, I will be showing you my rep method I was using before this. I'll make that a different video. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you leave a like, comment in this, you know, comment, comment, say, I want to see the, the new video, right? I want to see the old rep method. I want to see what you were doing before you unlock this ability. Um, but to those who have, are currently able to change your playbook, or if you're like the point guard or something like that, you can already scroll through your plays and quick one elevator rip is already in your team plays, then you can 100% use this. And then it, it's such a good method. Like I said, you've heard my reaction when it first happened. You heard my reaction, how much of a big shock it was, how much XP I got. So yeah, uh, I'll keep, I'll let the clips play. I'm not sure how many I have. So yeah, that's how you unlock the ability to change your plays. That's what play you should equip, which is quick one elevator rip. Quick one elevator rip is the play where you pass it to the top key and then cut to the basket and call for a oop. It's a very simple play, but it's very effective at the same time. 
the guards the bots can't guard it i don't know why and you literally just do this the entire entire game because alley -oops give you so much xp that it, it's actually ridiculous so yeah i think that'll be it for the video i'll keep the gameplay going but if you enjoy my commentary make sure you leave a like and a comment in the comment section below like i said i already made my build video if you want to see like my animations if you want to see a mixtape next if you want to see a slashing tutorial uh anything you know drop just drop down in the comment section which i want to see but yeah other than that i hope you enjoyed it um and i'll see you guys later peace Now, nah, now. Nah.